Usnea is a wonderful herb. And if you're lucky enough to live in an area where it is grown symbiotically on trees, you can have medicine at your fingertips. It has a history of uses for urinary, immune, and respiratory conditions. Let's dive into the benefits of this wonderful mossy herb and look at its lookalike Spanish moss. Hi, I'm Mary Bourne, traditional naturopath, and I love sharing natural remedies with people. Natural remedies have been around for hundreds, even thousands of years because they work and they work on humans and often pets too. Recently, my husband and I drove to Florida and back. We made several rest stops along the way. We took three days going and three days coming back and enjoyed the progression of spring along the way. When we left Michigan, it was only 43 degrees and the forsythia bushes were in full bloom, but the trees were still in dormant stage. So as we traveled south, we could see the progression of spring and it was really wonderful. See the trees budding out. And by the time we got to Tennessee, there was a lot of greenery. When we were at a rest stop in Georgia, we saw lots of moss hanging off of the trees. And I thought it would be a great opportunity to talk with you about the herb Usnea. Usnea longissima attaches to the tree by one single strand. If you kind of gently move away some of the fibrous parts of the plant, you will see that it attaches by one single strand. That's the identifying one of the identifying factors in finding Usnea and if you're finding the correct one. Also, when you take a strand and you pull on it, the outer part will snap away, but the inside is like a, a little bit of a rubber band. It has that stretchy part to it until you can pull it apart. Chickweed has the same thing and I discussed that and I'll attach the uh, video I talked about chickweed in the description below. But Usnea grows very slowly and if it's over harvested, we may lose it. So it isn't recommended to pull it off of a tree. What is recommended is that you find a limb that has blown um, away from the tree, has blown down uh, from some sort of a storm and take the uh, usnea from that broken branch because it will soon die anyway. It is um, in, it is symbiotic with the tree that it's grown on. And I'm gonna talk about that in just a few minutes. There. So, Tillandsia usneoids, or Spanish moss, is actually in the pineapple family, the bromelades. And uh, oral extracts of this particular herb in a uh, few studies have shown to reduce blood glucose in laboratory animals. The chemical responsible is 3-hydroxy-3-methylglutarate acid, which is shortened to be HMG. And it's found in some diabetic supplements. Traditionally, T. usneoids were brewed into a tree, tea to treat fevers, chills, rheumatism, and contractions of childbirth. Now, this is the um, Spanish moss that I pulled off of uh, the base of a tree. It actually was hanging off of the tree. I would say the strand was close to 10 feet long. So you can see how different this is from Usnea that is more 
used more for uh, herbal medicine. But this too has qualities that are beneficial. And this, of course, is very much like what you find in craft stores for floral decorations. But you would never want to use the craft store variety for medicine because it has been chemically treated. Traditionally, the Spanish moss isn't really Spanish and it really isn't a moss. <laughs> it's usnea, but it's an usnea like look-alike basically. But it has uh, it harbors lots of insects, and so as soon as I got home, I treated it with a hydrogen peroxide solution. I soaked it in the hydrogen peroxide solution for about five minutes, and then I rinsed it off. It actually is a live plant. It's called an air plant. And it can thrive and grow actually on your plants in this stage. Now the craft type is not going to grow because it has been chemically treated. <laughs> So let's talk about the other usnea. This wonderful medicinal plant is classified as a lichen. So it's not in the bromelade family. It is uh, actually a combination of uh, algae and fungus. And it is a symb symbiotic with the tree, as I mentioned. So it attaches itself to living trees and can easily be identified, as I mentioned, uh, by pulling on the string. This unique and endearing organism is quite prolific in the Appalachian Mountains. And so it's found like California and Oregon. And, and as I mentioned, because of its slow growth, it really is protected, uh, not really endangered, but it is protected species. And the natives used to use this in a lot of acute situations. So it is um, beneficial because it has a positive effect on infections such as streptococcus and staphylococcus. It is anti-inflammatory and antimicrobial. And this is why you find it in a lot of herbal formulas that have to do with wound healing, um, skin infections, even sore throats. There are gargles made with it. And one of the constituents in usnea is usnic acid, which is a powerful antioxidant and antimicrobial. And in that sense, it is used as a preservative. So this action is why usnea is found in deodorants and uh, other cosmetics to deter bacteria from forming in those particular uh, cosmetics. Uh, some weight loss products have used usnic acid, which is not just using the herb usnea, it's actually taking out uh, this particular polyphenol and uh, extracting it and using that. And that's very close to what I consider a drug because that's what a drug does. It takes the active ingredient from that particular herb and only uses that. And then it doesn't have the 200 to 500 for different actions that particular whole herb has. So when you take a, a extrapolate, a constituent, you're not getting the benefits that help to balance uh, the effects of that active ingredient. Now, Dr. Axe, who I refer to a lot, has a wonderful article on usnea, and I'm going to attach that link to uh, in the description below so that you can have a really good understanding and do some research yourself and see if you'd like to use this herb. Now it is also available in tincture forms from different, uh, like I think Mountain Herbs has that. So if you're interested in using it 
uh, for upper respiratory, uh, there is some good, um, what I would say, uh, people that have used it and gotten good results from it. But uh, clinically, there have been no human studies on Usnea. It's just one of those herbs that been around for ages and ages and passed down through the generations and been helpful to people. Now, I wanna talk about um, plants as teachers because talking about this symbiotic relationship of this moss-like growth that attaches itself to the tree and actually doesn't harm the tree in any way. It lives off of the tree symbiotically. And there are basically three types of symbiosis. And it's an ecological relationship between two organisms and they're different species, but they live together uh, with sometimes benefits to both, sometimes benefits to one, and other times only benefits and harms. So it benefits one person, one species and harms the other one. And that's considered parasitical. So when there's a parasitical relationship, then it actually, the one organism sucks the life out of the other organism. Now, there are a lot of human relationships like that. These, I call them energy stealers or energy toxins. These people, when you are done with their, their, their visit, so to speak, you are exhausted. Sometimes you live with people that are energy suckers and you have to decide what you want to do about that relationship because it's going to create illness. The environment is toxic and not healthy for either one. So, and if you pull the energy out of somebody else, you need to change what you're doing because a healthy relationship relies on parties benefiting from that relationship, both parties. And this can only happen through open communication where both parties feel comfortable expressing their emotions. And, um, you know, I've seen some people who take a pillow and the person with the pillow gets to talk and then they can toss the pillow to the next person when they're done talking and then that person. But the person with the pillow is the person who does the talking and the other one has to wait because oftentimes you don't get to express your full feelings when the other person takes over. So that's uh, a good therapy thing to do. Uh, if you feel like you're not able to express your feelings with your partner, then you need to create some kind of a comfortable atmosphere where uh, feelings can be heard on both sides. So this healthy relationships depend on love and respect and trust. And that's how a relationship can grow. If you do not have those factors, then the relationship is stunted and often one will die. And maybe they just withdraw or shrink in, but they do, do not get to be the person that they want to be um, because of this parasitical relationship. And one of the misconceptions the last two years have brought about is our relationship with bacteria, viruses, and fungi. The news has spread fear about germs to the point that people are germophobic 
they are constantly sanitizing and washing and protecting themselves. And actually, we need the relationship we have with these bacteria, viruses, and fungi to help educate our immune system so that it knows self from not self. And when we do not allow that to happen, the communication between the immune system and its job is lost. So we need to be able to expose ourselves to things and we need to support our immune system better. A lot of people just do not have a clue on how to protect their immune system. And that's why I've provided these videos so that you can share with other people some hints that I give along the way to help you strengthen your immune system. And certainly having toxic relationships is not going to strengthen your immune system. The immune system is what I call the I am system. And if you point at yourself, you actually point at the thymus. Now the thymus is the conductor of our immune system. And it's a very important part of our immune system. So I hope you're enjoying this little presentation on usnea and symbiotic relationships and that you share these videos with your friends. I hope that you like, subscribe and comment, if you will. Now, healthy soil, you know that healthy soil has lots of worms. It has a whole ecosystem in that soil. So if you have a healthy soil, there's really no need to put any kind of a rapid grow or any of these other fake uh, fertilizers. You need to encourage good soil or, wor or worm castings uh, are really a beneficial way to do it. There are um, uh, composting methods that are very good and those help to encourage healthy soil. And if you are doing it correctly, then the minerals will get broken down by the worms and different organisms that live in the soil. And the bacteria help actually to break down the different minerals so that it makes it available for the roots to take up. And when a plant is living in a soil that is not biologically correct, it creates a burden on the uh, living organisms in that soil. And as a result, the uh, pests come and disease comes and the plant becomes uh, sick. <clears throat> so soil biology has the same requirements as human biology to be happy and working in its highest potential. It needs a good home, lots of oxygen, fresh water, um, nutrition, uh, mineral rich food, and a strong community around it. So having this thought in mind that the soil is just like me will help you uh, be a better gardener and uh, enjoy gardening better. So please like and share these videos so that others can be healthier through natural means. Uh, if you would like to comment, I would appreciate hearing from you. And <clears throat> if you subscribe, I would appreciate that as well. Uh, I have a lot of different videos on my uh, YouTube channel. I have the, this video that I present once a week that talks about an individual herb. I have a monthly video that is lengthy. It is about an hour long that talks about different body systems and how our body works. And then I have a very short videos called Gardening with Granny. So I hope you enjoy um, all of the different video uh, venues that I create. Um, so get control of your health by focusing on herbs and healthy eating. Be thankful for the people and the environment and the love all around you. 
And I want to thank you for viewing. And until next video, this is Dr. Mary for the health of it.